MPs on the Justice Committee weren't due to discuss the SNC-Lavalin affair again until Budget Day, but the opposition forced an emergency meeting tomorrow to discuss next steps in the ongoing committee study. Will MPs agree to recall Jody Wilson-Raybould to testify, or have they heard enough now that the former Justice Minister and the Prime Minister's former Principal Secretary, Gerald Butts, have had their say? Joel Lightbound is Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Finance, and he joins us from Quebec City. With me here in studio, Michael Cooper is the Conservative Deputy Justice Critic, and Tracy Ramsey is the NDP's International Trade Critic. Hi to all three of you. Thank you for being Ashi. with us. Really appreciate Ashi. it. For me. Uh, Mr. Lightbound, of course, I want to talk about uh, what we're anticipating tomorrow with the Justice Committee, but I want to start off by asking you about the news of the day. Ethics Commissioner Mario Dion is, has announced that he's going on leave, uh, on medical leave. What does that mean for the investigation into whether undue influence was exercised. Well, first off, uh, I want to wish uh, Mr. Dion well uh, in his uh, recovery and in his uh, in, in this time of, uh, of illness for him. And I think the Ethics uh, Commissioner's uh, Bureau can operate uh, with the team that's already present. And in, as far as the process is concerned to name an interim uh, replacement, there'll be uh, one where all those involved in the uh, SNC Lavalin file uh, will not be uh, will not be involved. So, just to be clear, Mr. Lightbound, does this delay at all the investigation into the SNC matter? Well, that would be a question for the Ethics Commissioner's Bureau. I don't think so. Okay, moving on to the committee appearance tomorrow. As an MP, would you like to hear more from Ms. Wilson Raybould? Uh, personally, I I think that. She's already given a very detailed uh, and lengthy uh, testimony before the committee. Uh, I have no particular opinion in as far as whether she should come back or not. Uh, I'll leave that up to the committee. I think that we now have both versions uh, that have been fairly clearly detailed by all the witnesses that have appeared before the Justice Committee. But I'll leave that decision for the committee members to make. I have no idea where they're, uh, what their thoughts on this is. Mr. Cooper, I know the opposition wants Jody Wilson-Raybould to come back. What specifically more do you need to hear from her? Well, Ms. Wilson-Raybould, first of all, believes that uh, she should come back. Well, she said and she would if, she, if asked to. That, that's right. And uh, look, Ms. Wilson-Raybould's uh, testimony was very credible. It was very detailed. But in some respects, uh, there was contradictory evidence uh, put forward by Mr. Wernick and Mr. Butts. And as a matter of fairness, uh, I believe that she deserves a rebuttal to at least be able to speak to some of those uh, matters. Uh, in addition to that, uh, we also need to hear about the period that she was Veterans uh, Affairs Minister. Right now, she's being silenced by the Prime Minister, even though she says that there were communications, there were discussions, uh, things that took place that are relevant to this matter. And so we also need to hear from her in, in respect of that time period so that she can give her full version of events, which, by the way, Mr. Wernick and Mr. Butts ha were, were able mm -hmm. to do, but Ms. Wilson-Raybould isn't. Ms. Ramsey, in that statement where Ms. Wilson-Raybould said that she would be willing to appear again before the Justice Committee, she again reiterated her understanding, her interpretation yes. of that waiver that the Prime Minister granted. And, and she explicitly says that it doesn't include that period. So what would having her before a committee accomplish in, in getting that information? Well, I think it's unfair to have heard from Mr. Butts, uh, who didn't have a limitation on what he could speak about. We saw the Prime Minister come out during his press conference and reference some of those things uh, that we heard Ms. Wilson-Raybould clearly in the committee in her testimony say she couldn't comment on. So there is a, a very real need to have her come back to tell the other half of her story. And it's quite unfair to have had others come and be able to speak freely when she has not been able to do so. So this is why we believe she needs to come back to the committee. And we have to be honest about what's happening here with the Liberals. You know, they're controlling who can come and who cannot come to the committee. This is another chance for them to rethink that. Canadians are calling for Ms. Wilson-Raybould to come and to get to the truth, and this is another opportunity for the Liberals to understand how important this is. Mr. Lightbound, why not extend the waiver of Cabinet confidentiality and solicitor client privilege to cover the period after which Jody Wilson-Raybould was Attorney General? We don't have an answer to the crucial question of why she resigned. Well, if, if you look at the, uh, what's at stake here and what was asked by, uh, by the Justice Committee is whether there is or there was an appropriate pressure put on the Attorney General while she was Attorney General, the waiver covers that. So I think it's already unprecedented to have that sort of waiver be granted uh, for Cabinet confidences, and I think uh, that, that covers what's uh, being studied by the Justice Committee in that regard. So I, I, I don't see why it should be um, extended beyond her tenure as Attorney General of Canada. Are the optics, though, of that 
problematic, and I ask because there is that, like I say, we, we don't have an answer to the reason why she resigned, and it and it could look like the government is saying, okay, you can talk about one thing, but you can't another. I mean, that, that decision is firmly within the prime minister's hands. Do you get how the optics might be problematic? Well, I don't, I don't have that perception. I think when you have the former attorney general uh, testify for close to four hours before the justice committee answering the committee's uh, members' questions, uh, I think, and, and that the, the fact that this waiver was initially granted uh, shows a, a lot of transparency. We've heard from the different, uh, we've heard the different perspectives on the question that's at stake, that's studied before the justice committee, and I think the committee has all the tools to get to the end of this. Uh, with and the ethics commissioner as well. Well, uh, with the greatest respect, Mr. Lightbound, with uh, one arm tied behind her back, because, again, she can't speak to that period, even though she has made it clear that uh, that period she believes is relevant. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Wernick, the liberals had, uh, were quite enthusiastic about bringing, bringing back Mr. Wernick. Uh, why not Ms. wilson Raybould? I think they would argue that because the waiver, the, the order in council the prime minister gave was uh, happened after Mr. Yeah. Wernick's primary appearance. What would you say to well, that? Well, I, I mean... I, I think whatever the, the rationale is, I think the rationale is very clear for why Ms. Wilson-Raybould should be called back. It's painfully obvious. And this matter is not going away, mm -hmm. especially in light of uh, the OECD, who has now flagged it, who, who has said that they are monitoring it in terms of whether or not there was prosecutorial uh, interference, political interference with the prosecutorial discretion of the Attorney General. It may not be just that uh, a line was crossed in terms of potentially breaking the law here in Canada, but Canada's international obligations pursuant uh, to the anti-bribery OEC covenant may also have been violated. Picking up, Ms. Ramsey, on what Mr. Lightbound said about the study, the committee studying, because mm -hmm. I know you'll be there tomorrow, studying yes. uh, studying whether or not there was uh, political interference while Jody Wilson-Raybould was AG. Uh, does it make sense to uh, preclude the period after which she was AG from being part of this testimony, if that is the case? No. We need to know the truth. We need to uh, have everyone come. First of all, we've only had a, three people come before the committee when there were 11 that she named that were involved. All of those people should be before the committee. But let's be honest, Vashi, we're talking about a committee that's uh, liberal dominated. And really what Canadians are seeing is, you know, what is the effectiveness of a committee where the majority that's in the government who really wants to turn the channel on this is controlling who's coming and who's not and the narrative around why that's happening. We need an independent public inquiry out of the liberal hands and to get down to what has actually happened here and the truth because the globe is watching this has gone beyond uh, just uh, an Ottawa bubble story where people are paying attention uh, Canadians coast to coast to coast are talking about this I heard it when I was back in my riding uh, for this period of time I'm sure other MPs are as well we need to get to the truth and that includes having the Prime Minister come under oath before the, either the committee or at this uh, investigation again Mr. Lightbound a question of optics if Liberals on the committee are the only ones blocking other witnesses, including Jody Wilson-Raybould, from being heard. Are those optics problematic for your party? Well, I, again, as I've stated earlier, when you've had the former Attorney General be granted a waiver uh, to cover her tenure, her whole tenure as Attorney General, and to come testify for rounds after rounds after rounds of questions and give her version of events in a very detailed and lengthy uh, manner, which was, which was, I think, good for the committee to have. I think it shows a lot of transparency, but it's important to remember that the Ethics Commissioner is also in charge uh, and has been asked to look into the matter, and he is an independent officer of Parliament, mandated to shed light on the story and 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 I so I think I think the committee has already accomplished a lot in terms of providing the different versions to Canadians. But with respect, we heard her version, and then Mr. Warnick was allowed to come back yes. and give his counter version mm -hmm. of his. So, so you know, I mean, do you, do you see how that kind of looks unfair? That that but, you're allowing people that are speaking uh, on behalf of the government or or in favor of the government's argument to appear twice, but you're not allowing Jody Wilson-Raybould to. But at, at this point, it's a decision for the committee to make. I personally have no strong views on whether she should or shouldn't come back uh, to testify before the committee. Okay, I'll leave it there. Thank you, everybody. Thanks so much. Thanks Joel Lightbound, Michael Cooper, and Tracy Ramsey. Thank you.